wait and give him time to get there.
we are here what is up everyone hi my name is omega jones also known as the critical bard and i am so pleased and honored to uh bring to you along with this fine group of melanated gods and goddesses and those in between part three of the black af round table if you are new to this channel or if you're new to twitter or social media or if you just don't know anything about what's happening um, about two months ago after the uh, murder murder of George Floyd um, and the subsequent out, you know, the, the, the rage and everything that was going on um, in the Twitter sphere, in the tabletop gaming community, we were seeing some things happening. And I said, I would love to gather a bunch of black folk to just talk about what's going on. I would love to talk about how we feel things are happening for us in uh, uh, the tabletop and gaming community, how we feel things are happening in life um, as black people, because guess what? We don't get to take this off. This is not cocoa butter lotion, though I have it on. This is real. So we, I gathered this amazing group of people to come together and, and, and just enjoy each other's presence, enjoy each other's energy, and enjoy each other's joy, and be candid and real. So I'm gonna stop talking. Uh, well, I'll really quickly say, again, my name is Omega Jones, also known as Critical Bard. I am a professional vocalist and actor from um, the Midwest, St. Louis, what's up, STL? I am a partner Twitch streamer here on the Twitch. Um, uh, I do a lot of variety, I'm a good, I'm a good, guy i think i like to say my life consists of two things honey buns and being a hot mess that makes me i also believe in making trouble wherever we go yes that is a pun make trouble wherever you go because as bards and as performers in life it is up to us to shake up the system and, and and dismantle it and start over we are the storytellers we're the ones who get that shit uh happening but enough about me let's talk about this uh wonderful cast we have here uh let's start in, in the way i can see you well no i'll do it in, in order of the the screen i'm sorry tanya you're going first that's okay i'll be all right going first that way i can sit and listen to everybody else hey i'm tanya uh known as cypher tier online everywhere you may have seen me on rivals of Waterdeep, um on my own channel running people literally through hell and an abyssal goose i also dm dragon age over on the wandering dms channel and teach people to play D&D in uh, Animal Crossing on my island in a very stereotypical playing D&D in the basement scenario. But also, I'm like a 40-something grumpy black chick from the south side of Chicago, and I'm tired of everybody's shit, so I'm glad that we're having this again. I muted. Crap. Thank you. Uh, we, look, we're real. We've been honest. Uh, next on my screen is Christina Ariel in the house. Mm. Hi, my name is Christina Ariel. Um, you can find me Tuesdays on Rise of the Veiled Alliance on Twitter all the time. Christina Ariel. Um, also on the upcoming Pirates of Leviathan on Dimension 20, which is gonna be airing September 16th and I'm gonna promote it because I'm excited and I'm proud of it and my black as fuck character. So yeah, um, it's very exciting to be here with you all. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you will listen to hear and not to respond. And just thank you for being here and respect the space and the honesty that we are sharing and know that it is not an attack. It is our feelings and we are sharing those with you. So thanks for being here, guys. <laughs> Up next <laughs> is the fabulous, oh so talented, I swear he is just a chameleon when it comes to cosplay. We have Gabe Hicks. Oh, I was like, who are you complimenting? You. Um, hi, I'm Gabe, Gabe Games Games, Twitch, Twitter, pretty much anywhere else. Um, I do voice acting work, I cosplay, I do digital and tabletop game design. Um, and I, I realized recently that people often think that I'm quiet. Uh, and it's not so much that I'm quiet, it's just that I don't talk because some people don't listen. So I decided today I was going to be actively less quiet, even if people don't like what I have to say. I mean, the Bible says, and let's talk about it, Lacia, is that you can do whatever you want 
through Christ who strengthens you. My name is Gabriel, and I was named after the messenger. Ooh, hey, Shabo, Ibaba Baskin Robbins. You better say that. Um, no, no, next, um, next on my screen is... <laughs> up next on my screen is, is a fabulous tabletop creator um, created Swords Fall, which is an Afro-futuristic epic just environment that you need to know about. It is Brandon Dixon. Hey, man, Baskin Robbins, I'm sorry. I'm still, like, over that one because I really thought, like, 98 flavors of whoop ass. I don't know. It's a storyteller in me. I, I can make a whole story off of that. So, anyway, my name is Brandon. I make Swords Fall. Um, I'm a creator. You'll see I make lots of stories. I'm also unapologetically black and loud about everything. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Swords Fall 1. Um, also, mini plug, we're doing an amazing award contest for a black celebration art contest that we did um partially helpfully because of this cast and uh we'll be doing it on saturday we got some special guests the art's amazing blackness all the way around black black blackity black um up next we have someone i just adore um they are my unofficial husband. I mean, they're not, but I do love them. Uh, <laughs> no, they are somebody. Honestly, I didn't know as much before we did this stream, and I've grown to really adore them. But like the brother, I really should have had because my brothers are trash. Anywho, it is Michael Sinclair the second. Hello, Michael Sinclair the second. I go by Michael Critz everywhere. Um, I am a professional role player slash actor question um, mark. Uh, I am. Uh, on Fay Forge Academy podcast, and I am uh, one of the role players at Looking for More. Um, I also stream Magic the Gathering on my own personal channel, and I'm one of uh, people's favorite warlocks. Um, hashtag Lich Daddy, hashtag Eldritch Poppy. So that is me in a nutshell, and uh, it's good to be here. And now we have, um, I got to hide myself from that one. This man said Eldritch Poppy. Holy hell. Uh, anywho, uh, and lastly, but certainly not least, um, and she's going to hate me for saying this, I believe she is the heart of this group. She, um, when she speaks, you fucking listen. I'm going to say that again. When she speaks, you fucking listen. Period. I love her to death. She is somebody I, I've played games with and just have become... She's she's my little big sister, how she likes to say it. Um, everyone, give it up for Honey and Dice. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Honey, aka Honey and Dice. Um, on a day to day basis, I am a cybersecurity professional who specializes in enterprise architecture, which means I take apart companies and see what they're doing right, see what they're doing wrong, and help them find solutions to rebuild it. I'm also a internet safety and security educator for parents um, in high school and elementary school children. Um, and then to relax, I <laughs> run games, play games, um, do writing for games, and I'm just basically everyone's biggest cheerleader. Um, I'm just here, like I said, because I love people and I love to love and I love to support communities and do what I can to contribute to the stability of those communities being rooted in unconditional love. So um, I'm here because Omega tricked me a few months ago and didn't tell me what this was. <laughs> so now I'm here. That's not fair. <laughs> That's not fair at all. Um, however, um, I have to do a thing and I'm doing it on my phone for ease. Uh, we hit our goal. We've we have already five hit. Minutes. <laughs> we literally haven't done anything, and we hit our goal for I Need Diverse Games. And speaking of I Need Diverse Games, this is the segue. Hey, Tanya, can you talk about I Need Diverse Games? Because you are the founder of said thing. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm the founder of I Need Diverse Games. Literally six years ago, uh, early in the morning before I day job, I was mad about video games. If people remember Ubisoft's uh, It's Too Hard to Animate Women and all these games where we kept getting the same brown haired, blue eyed dudes saving the same skinny white chick, I was a little salty before I went to my day job. So I threw some tweets out, people talked about it. It was very much right time, right place, lightning in a bottle. People wanted to have those conversations. 
And uh, from there, it became its own thing. It got its own Twitter, its own Tumblr, a podcast for a hot minute, and then podcasting is hard in case you didn't know. Uh, but what we do mainly is send people to the Game Developer Conference. They very generously give us 25 passes worth about $45,000 every year because going to GDC is $2,000 a person in case you didn't know that. And that's just your ticket. Um, and then we support things like Game Devs of Color, uh, VectorConf, all these other places. And, uh, you know, we try to help people out. And any money raised today, we're going to do a fund to help streamers that are black and POC and just starting and may need an equipment upgrade, may just need like a camera, a nicer mic. And uh, any money raised today, is that what that is uh, going to? So, you know, whatever's raised today within reason, we'll try to match it and put our details on our Twitter and socials later. But basically, we're trying to get everybody in games, making them sting and also up front and on the scene and not just video games, but tabletop, which is why we're all here. Because uh, when I started playing tabletop, the sheet, the table was as white as a sheet of A4 paper. And in some places, it still is. And that's what we're trying to fight. She said it, not me. But I'm, I'm piggybacking off of that. Um, no, yeah, I that, said it. No, that, that's real. Um, we can um, uh, actually, Gabe on, I don't remember if it, was, if it was on my own talk show or if it was on this. Gabe said something to me one day, and it made me go, Oh crap. Um, and I urge you to do it one day. And that's literally go onto Twitch, put in D and D and get scroll. I guarantee you 95% of the groups you see are all white. Like, and I ain't talking about light skin, personal color. I mean, like 50 shades of beige. I mean, like it is white. It's like, I, I can say more things, but I'm not going to be disrespectful right now, at least not right now, it's like white. Um, Can I be? Sure. It's not really disrespectful, but once again, as I like to say, having a bunch of white women with a different color hair is still not diversity if your whole table is still white. Just having different color hair doesn't mean you have different color people. Oh, we uh, uh, we gonna Hashtag. have some words. <laughs> Hashtag. Oh, but let me add on to that. Also getting the lightest person that is that ambiguous shade of brown where we could be brown as a paper bag, maybe a little lighter if or darker if we even got some sun and having that be the only person at your table that you invite after somebody calls you out, that's not diversity either. Mm -hmm. Because I have been the token one time too many. And now, depending on who asks, I may come to your table, I may not, but you know what? I'm more interested in writing my own table. Hey, ha ha ha, ho, ha ha. Make me bring out Pastor Jones in the house. Um, I quickly want to bring um, um, a recognition to my shirt because it's really the theme of this talk today. It's not about being mean, though. You know, I am mean, move. Um, it's about being real. It's about being truthful. Y'all are about to hear some stuff you do not want to hear. I will say that again. Y'all are going to hear some stuff you do not want to hear. I will say it one more time for the folks in the back who came in too late and tried to ask somebody around the corner if they can get their ticket. And luckily they gave it to them. Y'all are about to hear some stuff you don't want to hear. And that's okay. Today is about you learning. Today is about you understanding that we're not coming for you. We're not trying to be like, you are a bad person. Man, 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 man. It's not about that. It's about just understanding the covert and the overt racism. It's about understanding what we go through on a daily and the things that we have to think about when you don't have to think about it. So we just want you to be prepared for that. We understand that you're human. You have emotions and you're going to have some angry emotions. I can guarantee it. Uh, but take that, internalize it, understand it come back stronger, come back better, come back more even as an accomplice, not an ally. I don't like that word. Uh, and be there. And with that, if anyone else doesn't have any random things to say, we're going to get this thing started. Well, I got plenty to say. I'm just waiting to be polite for once in my life. Ooh, ooh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to get started. So um, the blunt part. We did this two months ago. We did this on June 4th. We did it again on June, or oh, June 3rd. June 3rd, I believe. We did it again on June 10th. Um, those are great. Those are amazing. We talked about a lot of stuff. We're probably gonna repeat some of it because that's life. Uh, and also it proves that nothing changed. Uh, but 
We did this two months ago in the wake of the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and the, the list of names I'm not going to even get into because it's too many. It's incomprehensible. We did this talk. We told people to listen. We told people to understand. We told people to be here for us and be in our corners always, be on our streams always. Hell, be in my coffee always because your boy got to get paid. Um, and we trusted. <laughs> we trusted that folks would listen. We trusted that people might actually get it. We even had moments of, is this the time where people actually, they actually care? And they care more than they have said they have? Is this the moment where we can actually sit back and relax for two seconds because we're not the only ones fighting these fights? Is this a time where things actually change? Two months later, we're realizing that's a bold face fucking lie. So let's get into that. Uh, so the aftermath of those two talks to now, what has happened for everyone? How has everyone gotten by? Um, what good has come and what bad has come? Because at the end of the day, a lot of good stuff has come. I'll firstly say I'm a partner. I wasn't a partner before um, June 3rd, before George Floyd got killed. I wasn't. And now I am. And I got partnered in five months, meaning that first month was the first time I ever streamed. That fifth month, I was a partner. I know the trajectory that happened for me, and I know why it happened. Uh, well, not why, but a big catalyst of that. Good things happened. I'm getting some opportunities. I'm not going to be mad at those. But a lot of bad has also happened, and a lot of stuff felt ingenuine. So... I want to open it up for y'all. How has it been for you? I'm going to mute or I will pick on somebody. Think I won't. <laughs> I will roll a D6 and pick one of y'all. Oh my God. Well, I'll be the loud one because I can feel Christina's energy like from here. So we can like tag team. I see that. I see that smile. I see you. Um, for me, it's been weird because like I'm already, I was already a professional um, diversity consultant, DNI, sensitivity reader. Like that is my bread and butter. That's what. I need diverse games about, but also just speaking on these things, writing about them. But I got more and more people that are like, so we realized our game, our book, what have you, is super white and not diverse. Can you fix it? Which happens, but it happened way more frequently to the point where I'm like, you want me to read a 200,000 word book, novella, what have you, or you want to pick my brain and think that somehow I can magically fix things for you. Spoiler, one pick your brain coffee date ain't gonna fix it. A lot of people realize that to have hard conversations about your diversity initiative is bullshit. Or you waited way too late. Like when a game's about to ship or you got three months on a AAA title, that you a little late. I hope you got DLC coming because that's the only time to fix it. And you know, and it's it's been it's been interesting, and I'm sure other folks will bring it up, is that we had the the internal conflict of, oh, you profiting off somebody's death. I ain't profit off anything. There are things that I turned away or I turned that money back into helping other people, et cetera, like the money that came in through coffee, whatever, went back out to other people who needed way more than I did. But the fact that we had to have that conversation and that it was the skin folk who ain't kin folk that also had that reaction that has been an unfortunate side of it. And it's like, I didn't ask my name to be put on a list or have some big streamer put me out there because a lot of those same streamers that were like, oh, there's all these black people that suddenly realized existed. They're not in our chats anymore, if they ever were. That one big sub gift drop was the only time we've seen them. There's no engagement on our tweets. There's no retweeting of our going live. So it looks very much like I'm I'm in this for like a couple weeks, a month, and now we're seeing that I'm so tired. I'm fatigued and we're not seeing protests on the timeline. And when you bring it up, you still use Black Lives Matter in your tweets. People are like, oh, isn't that over with? It ain't gonna be over forever. It's not gonna be over until black people ain't gotta be scared of police. Where I'm someone who grew up with officer friendly 
Now, if I see a cop, I will turn the other way and go as quick as I can without being afraid that I'm gonna get shot. And I'm almost 50. I shouldn't be afraid of cops like I am now, but you know what? You never know. They could think I'm looking at them funny, think that I saw something I didn't and be the next hashtag. And that goes for anybody on this panel, anybody black watching. So nothing has changed in that sense. We got a little boost for a month. Cool. Now, now what comes next? Where's the continued support? That's my question. You're tired. Mm -hmm. You're tired. Mm -hmm. You posted a black square. You didn't share, you shared a couple stories. You're tired. You don't care. You don't actually care. And why do I say that you don't care? Because your caring was contingent on trending. Who say that so again? Many, mm. your, care. your caring was contingent on trending. So some of you have kept Black Lives Matter hashtag in your profile, in your name. You share not a lick of information. And when we do share information, I'm looking at you, D&D &D community, because I'd like to go ahead and get this out of the way. Well, my post about black people being murdered that may segue into my career, my job, streaming, what have you, is not the place for you to derail conversations. You are still what abouting our deaths. You are still seeing a post about black lives and finding some way to correlate it to yours to make you care. You have to see yourself in it to care about it. It's not about you. This is not about you. You may say, I am broke. I have mental illnesses. I have this. You are still white. You can still walk into a room and have people respect you on sight. You don't have to prove yourself the second you walk into the room. You don't have to prove you're one of the good ones. You don't have to prove that you can speak properly and then surprise people because you're articulate. You can still live a normal life and put up a hashtag. We still have to attempt to go out into the world in the middle of a pandemic while facing the pandemic of being black. Oh, whoa, hey, please say that again. Whoa. It is a pandemic. Our skin is a pandemic, unfortunately, because we are immediately seen as a criminal, not a victim, no matter the situation. We are going out into this world I am 34 years old. I'm scared to go out into the world. I wanted to go to the grocery store the other day. I sent my husband because I don't want to go out because all it is, it's a mile to the store from my house. I see three to four police officers right now between my house and that store. And I am terrified because no matter how you guys know me as goofy or affable or fun, cops see me as maybe she stole this car. Maybe she's up to no good. If I pull her over, am I going to pull my guns out just because? These are still things we have to face. So we need you to keep caring and you don't care. We saw the statistics, CB, we actually pulled it up and looked at the mm -hmm. analytics that stops right at July. And there is a slope. I can pull up the analytics right now and tell you, cause I peeped the game, I love numbers. So you're telling me that automatically after this point of heightened trending and heightened seeing Black Lives Matter and after the quote unquote rioters that took away from the true narrative of the story like you stop caring when it was not salacious you stop caring when it was not making you look woke as fuck and not making you look like you cared about your black friends and we need you to continue to care because we are tired you're not tired you haven't been carrying this load you will not continue to carry this load every day that you walk out into the world and you cannot put on a mask you cannot pretend that it is not affecting you you cannot walk into a room and just exist and be and as long as you have that privilege you have an obligation to put it forth to make the world a little easier for someone else because we are tired we are exhausted and i don't want to keep going through the world fucking tired before my feet hit the floor Sorry, not sorry, but geez. Look, I'm not gonna have these lulls. Somebody gonna say something and I'll speak up. Look. So, uh, I mean, I was gonna say basically what Christina got to because for me, that's why I feel funny about the whole thing because I, I hustle. 
You know what I mean? Like Swordsfall is known because I make it known for it, for a little old reason other than that. You know what I mean? The people who tweet me out, they tweet me out because they saw me because I'm consistent. And even with that, I saw a spike of activity and hits and sales that I haven't seen since my Kickstarter. And I knew where it came from. Like you guys were saying, I got the analytics. I can, I know exactly where it came from. And then just like that, just, you know, after 30 days, you watch it just poof. And it just, it makes me think about the excuses you hear. So it's mm. like, okay, you do know who we are. You do have the money. You just didn't have a reason. And while we're talking, don't get me wrong, I like the money, but people have already co-fied and PayPal'd me the equivalent of two days of what I would normally make on my store. And while I don't mind that, I really would have preferred that to go into the store, to go into what I'm doing, to go into, you know, to what I'm about, not just into my pocket, because that feels like bribery, right? Because, like, it doesn't matter if you send me money in PayPal or Ko-Fi, I'm still going to say the same thing tomorrow that I was going to regardless. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't mind people doing it, but sometimes I think people do it like they think it's tied at church, and it's, it's really not, you know? So that's my main concern. I just want people to also follow that up with real action because that's all that really matters and i feel like everything that's happened since the last one just shows that people can show up and they can care and they can donate and all that but where's like the long game you know what i mean like where's where, where's the part that we get to to take home like the congratulations like that's what i want i want that end game i want that win and i just want i want people to take that sadness and that need for i feel like people need to close a loop right like they feel bad they know things are going on they want to stop it they don't know how so they're like here's money here's this like we put blm in our tag you know we went dark for a day they're like they're thirsty to to solve it and the only thing you can do might be at thanksgiving when uncle bob says a ridiculous thing you don't blow it off you do ruin the whole dinner because that's what time it is you know what I mean? Like, maybe it's time, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, it's that time to where, like, I think that if there was ever time to say that talk is done, and then I'm saying we got a riot, I'm just saying, like, when you're also PayPal co fine just remember to go vote. Just remember to, like, maybe bug your senator. If you live in Kentucky right now, I'm looking at you so hard. I'm going to be real. Like, if you were an ally and you live in Kentucky, you know what I mean? So it's, it's that kind of like, that's kind of where we're at. And so that's all I've been thinking about since this time, like watching my sales go up and then dip. And I'm like, cool. I don't want to be part of a trend. And I don't want people to feel like it's okay. Like, cool. Like I donated to Swordsfall for black as fucking. It felt good. And I'm just letting people know, like, that doesn't work for me. I love your money. Don't get me wrong. Spent it wisely. I want action. Because like Christina says, like, it's rough out there. Like, I had a weird thing the other day when they go, went to go pick up food. You know, like, for the first time you go outside with masks and everything, I still got discriminated on. Like, I'm tired of that. So I'm I'm on the let's get it done train. So whatever that means, if that means unrest, cool. It's that time. We're there. We are there. And I feel like that's what I learned over our spring break. That's what I'm calling it. Terrible spring break. Rest. Um, Rest. And also, our comments and our this even the chat for this is not the place for you to prove that you are the most woke or what you've done i don't want an itemized list of how you've done stuff for black people on a post where i'm venting about my pain well I, i'm so sorry but you know what i did you know what i did you don't get a pat on the back for doing the bare minimum Stop asking for a pat on the back and just do the work to do the work to be present. That is an ally. An ally is not the person that needs accolades or needs to be consoled and cajoled because they talked to their honor uncle or because they spoke out and posted a status. Don't send me your fucking status. Sorry. Like, don't send me uh, for the F-bomb, not what I said. Don't send me your status and tell me this is what I did today for this. Why are you telling me? What is what is making you come to me and tell me this? Oh, Christina, I'll you wait. know you know exactly why. I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna look at Gabe and Honey because y'all ain't said nothing yet, mm -hmm. or Michael. 
I must say this because I've had to do this too often, both in person, online, and on Facebook. When you do those things and reply to someone tried to touch my hair, someone called me an N word, I had to stop my stream because of racist slurs. Oh my God, that's so terrible. But you know what I did? I donated $5 to the NAACP. I care not one Kentucky Fried F for what you have done in, in your attempt to be quote unquote woke or to be useful. And also stop asking us how to be a better white person. I can't make you care about nobody. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a therapist. I'm just an ordinary black chick that has to survive in this world. We all have to survive. So when you come in hat in hand, sliding into DMs, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what I can do. How can I help? There's articles about that. All those anti-racism books, are they collecting dust that you bought in June? We don't care. I literally do not care about why you are so nice and you donated and I gave you a dollar on Patreon. Why don't you give me all your attention? So I'm going to turn it over to Gabe and Honey because I will start ranting and then we'll be like two hours later and y'all have to like just cut my mic. I love you, but hold on one second. There's no such thing as a blue life. That is a career choice. That is not something they can go out into the world and exist as normal problems. I mean, people. But I am saying we cannot take our skin color off. We do not. This is not a choice. This is who we are. This is who God made us. And y'all are out here talking about believing that people were made in God's own image while treating us like shit. This is not a blue lives matter situation to the person that just decided to put that in the chat. That's not a person that is a job choice and i'm going to piggyback real job quick choice. before they hop in because i'm going to force it i'll move everybody else but them um the the funny thing about blue lives matter is that it only came up because we said black lives matter and when we said black lives matter we never said black lives only matter and we said we never said other lives don't matter either. We just said, hey, we're here. Pay attention to us for two seconds because we're the ones dying right now. Head as uh, uh, Uncle Stefan, no, Uncle Steven, Uncle Steve came in and said, hey, blue lives matter too, which proved a point you didn't want to admit. You understand exactly why we're saying black lives matter. Because you are trying to say, no, blue lives matter, which means you understand that lives matter, just not the black part. Because it's okay for you to switch the black for the blue. So when you come in here with that bullshit, understand what you're actually saying. You're racist, that's period. Hey, uh, 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 Michael, Gabe, or honey, go ahead and uh, pick that mic up. Thank you. Can I, can I say something real quick? Like one thing. Mm -hmm. On the Blue Lives Matter, the only Blue Lives I know is Papa Smurf, and he never killed nobody. That we know of. I mean, yeah, that we know of. I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. I will roll a D4. Think it's a game. I'll go. I'll go. I mean, <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I mean, the thing I can only think of. It, I would I would classify myself my uh, classify myself as a smaller creator or like someone who's you know up and coming and the whole like trajectory of BLM and you know all this has come that we're speaking into right now. Um, I definitely had a case of this week like imposter syndrome. I was just like, you know, I'm getting all these things. I'm getting all these. You know, uh, I'm getting all this like opportunities and these are things that are amazing and yeah i work for it but like i don't sense the support or i don't sense like things are still happening or people that actually care so like you know it's hard to kind of think of like okay like i got this opportunity but i don't feel like i deserve it in a sense because there's no like that support isn't there the hype wasn't there or like there there's no consistency right so like I've had to deal with that lately of like figuring out do I do I deserve to be here have I put in the work have I put in the effort like objectively yes but it hasn't felt that way and that's been real difficult to deal with um and speaking from my background and to jump on some points that were made earlier about us wearing a mask amidst black being in 
in the, a coronavirus COVID-19 environment, I used to be a Navy corpsman, a medic, a veteran in the military. And so that being said, like, you know, I put my mask on and I know statistically and what I've been seeing that being black while COVID is happening, you're less regarded to be saved. Like they will not intubate you as at the same rate as someone who looks different from you as white folk or, you know, light skin folk, whatever have you, like they're looking for ways to not provide you resources. So actually us not taking care of ourselves or not putting the mask on and it's a double-edged sword. You're like, you put your mask on, you're suspicious. You put your mask on, but you're trying to like stay safe and keep other people safe. But at the same time, like if you ever get in the case where you have a COVID case, like you don't necessarily know if you'll be taken care of, even if you have medical insurance or the proper thing that you need. Right. So, you know, I, I think, um, from the two points of the environment that we're in and feeling like imposter syndrome. And I've been dealing with a lot of mental health stuff and getting the proper care and meditation and all that, because amidst all this, like we're all still living our lives, right? We're all this opportunity, life is still happening. And whether or not we get that support, we have to show up. And that can be a lot to take on. Um, and, and carrying, because we're, you're all here watching us because and cb selected us right because you folks look up either look up to us pay attention to us whatever but we're carrying on the load understand that we're carrying on the load for other people who are out there so that's a huge responsibility as well and you know i i felt nervous coming into this because it's like am i supposed to be here can i carry the load for the other folks um and, and that's what i've all been processing in these past you know, two months. So with regard again to the pandemic and as Michael just referred to, there's a gigantic issue in the black community with receiving disparate care. People of color, yes, black people especially, where one, I've talked about this vocally, I got the flu when I was pregnant and they told me I was not sick, just pregnant, gave me half a bag of fluids and sent me home. and. I had to go back to the hospital the next day and was there for four days in the hospital because they thought that I was being hysterical because in medical books, they say that black women do not feel pain in the same way that white women do or that white, that black people do not feel pain. And that is the ideal that they have. This is stuff that is in medical books. My father died of COVID April 25th in complications. The first thing that the doctor said, not the doctor, but the nurse, whose name was Apley Bubba. The first day that my dad was in the hospital after I called every single hospital in Columbus, Georgia and Phoenix City, Alabama to find out where my dad was after they took him to the hospital. The first thing this dude says to me is, don't worry, he hasn't been violent thus far. My dad was a six foot five, 200 something pound black man, retired military, retired from the sheriff's department. And the first thing out of this person's mouth about the man who was the nicest fucking person in the world and deserved the world and deserved proper care and not to have his children told that at a certain point we should be prepared to just say goodbye because they stopped taking care after a certain number of days was that he wasn't violent. Why do you think they thought that my dad was violent? Why do you think that they thought that this man, who was one of the kindest people, who anyone could tell you was the kindest person in the world and treated everyone with respect, was violent? A man who had to have his face on 24-7 in the military, who had to have his face on 24-7 as a police officer to get even the same level of respect from other people. Because he was big and he was black. So we are going into this pandemic and we go out into the world and people see us with a mask on. They don't think of us as trying to save our lives to avoid being in a hospital where we won't receive the same care as you. They see us as a threat because now our faces are hidden. God forbid I go out into the world as a black man trying to wear a mask and keep myself safe when I'm immediately looking like a threat. And it's what are you up to when everyone in the world is supposed to do this, but we're still the suspect. And that shit is tiring. Gabe, honey. Um, no, go ahead, go ahead, honey. 
You're muted. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um. One thing that came to mind when thinking about this and the aftermath and what has been happening and just just a, a swirl of um, I'd say narrative existence between then and now is that in this people's support and so on there was a tendency to forget about a person's individuality and personal autonomy and not only how they respond to things, what they choose to respond to and why um, they're responding to things or why something affects them in one way or another and how they chose to communicate that with the world. I think it's a lot easier for people who consider themselves allies or supporters to fall into assumed group think that because everyone is mad, everyone wants us to support them with the same type of energy as this other person when that's not the case. So I know I have not been on the front lines as much as anyone as most people on this panel when it comes to my engagement about certain issues and challenges and so on in the community because I'm doing so much work behind the scenes, if that makes sense. Um, because that's not how I choose to engage because it's a little bit too much for me personally. You talk about being black during COVID or pandemic, I am an individual who happens to be black and who lives with a plethora of medical challenges who before Corona was having to wear a mask or consider wearing a mask or making a conscious choice not to make a mask because of the assumptions people make when you hide your face. And without going into details, I've had family members have six to seven police officers called on them because they have legitimate medical reasons why they cannot wear a mask. They were not near anybody in a public area. They were staying six feet away, taking care of a baby with lots of people walking around with masks on their chins, on their necks, everywhere. But they come to this one individual, older individual who's staying away from people move closer than six feet to her. She gives all her stuff, has her medical paperwork, everything that she needs, and they call seven police officers. On an elderly black woman with an infant. And threatened to arrest her for criminal trespassing because she did not have a mask on. Now, when I say this, this is not me being pro-mask, anti-mask. I believe in it because I've been having to use them before all this happened. But I have been physically pushed out of elevators. I have had doors slammed in my face, even with a mask on. I have been approached when I am not near people. Um, mask within reach or so on, because I have a medical condition that if my circulation is cut off, I go through a situation where I pass out. So I have to be very selective where I go, when I go, and so on. And people feeling perfectly comfortable in this new climate to approach aggressively, getting in those bubbles past that six months and demanding. And then when you turn around and say, let me put my mask on and I can answer you, escalations. So I say that. <laughs> To say most of my concern and attention and stress has come from offline things than online. Because when I come online, because I know everyone is going through so many things, I endeavor to create a safe haven on all my pages and so on, so that people can get a break. 
because it's a lot going on right now. And we live in apartment buildings where nobody's thinking about evacuation plans for people who are disabled. And when you live in communities where most of the disabled people happen to be people of color or black, you see too many times in case of emergency, they're, they're left in their apartments and everybody else is outside. And it just makes my heart hurt to think about the details people aren't paying attention to. The domestic abuse shelters, since all this happened, have been hit so hard. Domestic abuse shelters that support lower income families and people who are really in need did not get as much attention or help during all this time. But a, a black square and a hashtag and uh, I'm gonna post about how awful everything is, this attention. And it just makes me a little bit sad. We're gonna come back to the performance mm -hmm. that everyone did during this real soon, because I got a lot to say on that, but really quickly before Gabe goes, I just wanna mention a thing that if you were listening to what Honey was saying, and if you can put it in a couple of words, not the exact words, um, and not even close, but when you're black, whether it's in a game, whether it's in person, whether it's in the park, whether you're walking down the street, whether you're online, whether you're on a headset, whether you're just existing, when you do bad, you're the bad guy, bad person, my apologies. When you do good, you're still the bad person. We have to choreograph our lives so specifically to never appear as the bad person because it does not matter what we do at all. Someone is going to find something, flip it and reverse it, all of a sudden, we're the villain in their story. And this isn't just me speaking out of my ass. I can guarantee it has happened to every single last Black person in this stream. I can guarantee it has happened to every single last Black person viewing this. You have to make sure when to use your left foot versus your right. When to blink versus to nod. When to look away versus to actually look towards. We struggle with simply existing. Some of y'all care about animals more than you care about black people. Which I'm not saying don't care about animals because I love me, my cat. Like, I do. But we are so below sub-basement if you want to look at Parasite if you've seen that movie and people don't want to admit that but guess what that's what this talk is for because we're going to fucking force you to believe it hey Gabe go um, so earlier you asked about like changes that had come and there was there was a bunch of good changes I like since the last one I've actually quit my day job like I've been doing my design stuff full time which is something i didn't expect uh at least not anytime soon hey gabe i apologize i'm gonna cut you off real quick obviously c parasite is about fucking class and not race however i'm using an analogy if you know what that is webster's look it up obviously we know what the movie parasite is about i'm not literally using that same thing with snowpiercer i'm talking about the hierarchy in society and the fact that you didn't fucking listen, the fact that you wanted to say, oh, it's about class, not about race, you're proving our point. We can't say anything without being the bad person. So think about that shit before you speak. Thank you. My apologies, Gabe. Correct your mama. Um, yeah, there have been like a bunch of opportunities that have come up. And I've, I've taken as much as I can. And I had to also realize that part of the reason I took as many opportunities as I did 
is because if I stay busy, then I don't necessarily have to think because if I think I get sad or overwhelmed and I can't afford to be because then I'll fall apart. And that like, for me, it doesn't feel like it's plausible. Um, there have been a couple circumstances that I wasn't, I wasn't happy about. Um, I, I've done a fair few interviews for just different stuff that I've been doing, which is awesome. One of them was not. Um, I realized like after the interview, uh, I thought that they wanted to talk to Gabe, the black person who had made these cool things, but they were probably told to talk to this black person named Gabe who does things um, because the person didn't know a thing about what I did. They didn't research what I did. And most of the interview, uh, even if an apology was made later, most of the interview was spent, spent about critique of something that I made. And I sat there and I did it. I will not work with those people again. And they, I hope they realize that the person they chose burned a bridge because I, it is, it is a, it is a privilege I am not offering with forgiveness. It is not required of me. It was not my job to make that person do their job. And it bothered me because I am trying to show value in being myself, which related to Michael is the whole imposter syndrome. And I don't want someone to talk to me because it's trendy to talk to a black person. I wanna be a black person that is doing this amazing thing and they're proud of me for who I am and then managing to do it even with disadvantages that I have. And I, I, I say that in general, there's probably dozens of times that people wanna to speak to a black creator or any sort of creator out there who is marginalized. And if you do it, make sure they're a person when you talk to them. They are not, I'm not just a, a black person who does things. I am Gabe, who is a black person who makes these things. That's what I, that's what I wanna be. I don't wanna be, yeah, that black guy made that thing. If you don't care about the person that I am, while also appreciating that I am a black man trying to do it, at least don't pretend. If you don't care, keep walking. <laughs> but if I find out that you didn't care halfway through it, I will, because I feel like I want to as a part, that's my moral code, I will honor an obligation that I made, but you will never receive another obligation from me, ever. I'm going to use that because at the end of the day, we are a group of tabletop. Um, okay. I see you. Uh, we are a group of tabletop gamers and just people in that community. So we're going to hone it into there for a second, but go ahead. Sorry. Talking to you, honey. <laughs> well, I was going to actually segue smoothly into talking about being a tabletop creator with that. Um, the number of DMs, posts, tags, and so on that I was inundated with after the first and the second round tables um, were super overwhelming. And I had to take a moment to realize that every new follow, and it's kind of sad you have to think this way, but every new follower is either a friend or a foe. And probably a large percentage of them are foes. So there was a self-consciousness about, oh my goodness, there's more eyes on what I'm doing. The any invite, and this is just something I've had even before joining the gaming circle, whether it's talking to um, women at a panel or emceeing or um, being a mentor. If I'm ever approached from what I call an ethnicity first perspective, as in, we want you to join this panel, not like this kind of thing, but join this panel, join this group and so on, because we noticed we didn't have any black people or because we noticed we didn't have diversity. That comes across and a lot of times I'm able to forgive it because I know it's not willful ignorance, but it is still disrespectful in a way someone may not mean. It's not malicious intent. Um, 
sometimes. I had a habit of saying no, because you are not coming to me because I am a cybersecurity professional or because um, I've studied music for over 20 something years or because I am a writer or I run games. You came to me because you noticed in your words that you didn't have a black person at your table. So come and join us. Um, approaching those recruitment opportunities, people need to do talent first. And if you want more black people or more disabled people or more whatever at your table, you need to approach that person from, I really respect the work that you do. I really uh, appreciate the materials that you create. Can you come and join me? Um, because again, I don't think 85% of it comes from malicious kind of or uh, harmful intent, but I think there's just that, that category people don't think about. Like when they say, oh, you've done such a great job. I'd love to meet your parents. And you're sitting there going, okay, why? I just, I'm just curious about how you ended up the way that you are. Okay. Um, so in that one statement, you have just invalidated <laughs> all the work that I've put into this, the degrees that I've gone to get and so on, um, and not really thought about it. So when you recruit for your table, your program, your, your process, your company, and you want to add more diversity to that particular group, actually care about their talent and what they are bringing. And by expanding your scope of recruitment to just people outside of who you know, you'll be introduced to people with so many different backgrounds and so many hues, you'll end up with this just beautiful rainbow colored tapestry um, of a game table and so on, if you're approaching it with the right energy. Tanya or Christina? Um, <laughs> you wanna go? Well, I mean, I, I was just thinking about what Honey was saying because you know, and, and Christina, I'd like it if you, you kind of corroborated this is that, you know, when I'm getting these offers to like join tables or, you know, Mega Might Laugh, the infamous uh, charity game that we were on. And, you know, all these people, it's like, or, or the people and DMs that <laughs> stop the DMs that I get, it's like, I can't find black people. Do you know where they are? And I'm like, well, there's one sitting here literally right now that is not a muse that you. We're not on front page. I can drop f bombs. That you fucking message me out of the blue when I ain't heard from you in like six months to go, my or and you know I'm telling all my friend if they're watching, I don't care. You should have thought about this before you message me on Facebook. I am not nerdy black people finder. I am not Google and these people that are or that are like, uh, well, you know what? They know where to find me. You can tell on me. I don't care. Um, the people that want to be in their feelings or the people that follow you, and this ties in what Honey was talking about, I got so many follows after these round tables and it was, I noticed it was all the same white people that then would like, like stuff I say, or they reply to tweets or my favorite, and I'm being heavily sarcastic, we're doing a game, can you join us? Like they'd reply to some unrelated tweet. I have a contact form. All of us have various ways of being contacted. And it's just this weird idea that you are now talking to me because you know, the black people Pokemon shuffle has reminded you or alerted you to our existence. And you think it's a compliment to out of the blue, ask us to join your all white table that one time so you can show that you're not racist, that you that you understand the black people's plight and that you you get it. Let's be real clear. Have made your table once ain't fixing anything. It's not fixing anything that Honey was talking about, that Christina's gonna talk about. 
And this is why we go make our own spaces, why we're having this round table. And the folks that fix their fingers on Twitter go, well, why isn't there a white AF round table? Because you got all oh, the tables. Oh, fuck all right. all no, that let shit. Me, Sorry. Let me. <laughs> or the people, you know, that fix their fingers and say that are like, y'all racist. Why can't there be anybody who's not black on here? Spoiler, you had all the tabletop the whole 45 years D&D has existed. Let me have some space. Let us all have some space. And if you want to be in your feelings because we're having this discussion, everybody's in chat who wants to benefit, who wants to then go, oh, my God, I didn't know this. This is so terrible. And follow us all on Twitter. And the minute we talk about white people, y'all want to be in your feelings because you're not that kind of white person. I played d d with a black person once in college, and I would never do this, and orcs, and blah, blah, blah. No one cares. Christina, and I know Megan wanted to talk after that. Hi. Not your token black girl here. Because that's not what we're here for. We are not your token. I will not be at your table and eating alone. Stop inviting us to your table that we are not actually welcome at. Stop doing it to pat yourself on the back. I am grateful for every opportunity that I have. You know why? Because I'm a grateful person. I enter the world with a grateful heart. No matter how hateful people immediately try to make me, if I say, hey, there's an issue with X, Y, Z. And as far as the people saying, well, I chose the person that was best for the job. I always choose the people that are best for the job. I would never hire someone just to be a diversity hire. Well, the reason that there are those situations is because you automatically assume that the best person is the person that looks just like you. And I, I have to mention this. I spoke on it earlier. We, oh my gosh, yes. We are talented. The people in these cubes are talented in their own right. We are not just talented. We are not just your pick the black person. We all are talented. We are accomplished. We work our butts off. So one thing I'd like to say is an aside, how do I say this? Or just speak on it, speak on it. When you are doing character art for your games, do not make us less black than we are. Do not give us white characters. Do not whitewash our characters. Do not say, oh, well, she's an elf and she's delicate and her delicate features require that she be white and whimsical and therefore seen as innocent. We can still be innocent and brown. Honey is one of the most innocent, kind-hearted people I know. Not to put you on the spot, but like, and she brown, she black. <laughs> like, why do you automatically, there's this assembly, what is it, the angel devil complex, slut versus virgin complex. And virginal is always seen as white and sweet and innocent. And if you look at the comments on a lot of the games that we are in, no matter how kind or soft we play the character, she's, oh, she's so sassy. Oh my gosh, like, I love her. And then you depict her in this way that is stereotypical. You draw her in this way that is stereotypical. You make her nose larger. You make her lips larger. You make her hips larger. You exaggerate features of what you think a Black person is, not who this person is, not, hey, I've described this character this way. This character is me. This, like, depict me. You say, unless you're a drow, you need to be lighter like, you, like i'm not but you need to be lighter and you don't realize that you're bringing us in at guard you don't realize that when you're saying oh my gosh like this is the first time i've had a black person at my table and i'm so excited do you want a fucking cookie uh, christina mm -hmm. just a, i don't know are you done I, I was about to say something oh i mean i was just gonna say you need to start seeing us if you're going to have us at your table. You need to start making your table a place of acceptance. You need to start accepting us at your table and treating us like we are not the elephant in the room. Like we are not like it's like you caught, like Tanya would say, a wild Pokemon because like you just caught the most special Pokemon and you have to tell everybody about it and pat yourself on the back about it because we're still the same level of talent, if not more. We're still smart. We're still as clever. We still can go on a whim. 
uh, don't lessen us to make yourself feel better about yourself. Yep. Don't take away from our accomplishment to make yourself feel and look better. Yep. My mm. uh, yeah. I mean, not to compare ourselves to Pokemon, but like, here we go. You caught us, right? We're this special thing, right? But if we, if you don't see us a month later and you don't see any of following other people, like other people who came after us, right? You got to analyze yourself. You probably fucked up. Like there's, there's probably a reason why we come and did a thing. We did our best. We up and left and no one else is coming. And you're like, why isn't no one else coming? I wonder why, like you, you go figure that out because there's probably a reason why no one else is, is coming around after someone that you were like, Oh, you know, so-and-so is black. We should have them on. Or so-and-so is a, a black lady, a black LGBTQ person, you know, whatever. If you got us on and then we were there and we left and no one else came after us, or you're having trouble getting someone out after that, it's probably because, and it's not because we're, we're off saying all, yet all this stuff behind, like it just shows like there's, there's this palpable thing that is like, if you didn't come correct while we were there, we don't even have to say it. It's just like, we're not, you're not going to get anyone else. Like it's just, it's just not going to happen because that's how this, this all works. You know, we've had to, as, as black folks, we've had to analyze and keep ourselves safe right and the moment we don't feel safe we're going to pull that ejection pack but like tanya has said other people on twitter who are black said we will finish our contract we will hold up to our promises that's who we are right but the minute that's done we're going to be professional we're going to say goodbye we're going to say great work like it right that's what we do like we come we do our thing we do it top tier and and if you know our contract's up and we the relationship just doesn't work you know, we did our thing and, and we don't have to communicate out that to the world because other folks can analyze that themselves and be like, hmm, something doesn't add up. We don't have to communicate that. Listen, like we don't have to. That just shows up in the things, how you operate, how you build things, how you communicate online. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, we don't have to say it just to be clear. So just like Pokemon, like you can catch us, but some get away for a reason. That's a powerful statement you just said. Um, sorry. I grew up Christian, if you didn't know that. I grew up in church. And the quote that keeps coming to my head is creating me a clean heart, but some of y'all are dirty as fuck with how y'all treat black people. Specifically black gamers, specifically people in this tabletop gaming community. I cannot tell you how many times I've been asked to be a part of something because I'm black. But to make matters worse, it's not because I'm black. It's because you're white and you need a black object to appear as an ally. And then you're going to toss me away like I don't exist. I have made this statement on Twitter many a times. I have made this statement on my own streams many a times. I am an equity fucking actor. I am a literal performer. Most people work in offices or they do other things or whatever flips your script. I am an actor first and foremost. Role playing is in my blood. So why am I only being relegated to the tokenized random black person that's getting asked to guest on these shows and then tossed in the mud. Because I have worth, if that's, your, if that's what you're wondering. We've gotten that out the way. I have worth, so it's not about me. It's about you needing that. You need to prove to the world that I care about black people. And this is how I'm gonna show it. Hey, Critical Bard, you wanna be a part of my show? I want the world to see that you're on my show so I don't look like a racist. Again, I have a plethora of offers. I do. But it's not about me. It's not. It's about all of us. 
because I'm not going to be your token any longer. Hell, I really wasn't doing it, but to be blunt, some of y'all are paying and I need to pay my bills. But I'm not going to be your plethora. I'm sorry, your token. Because I know my own worth and I know what I can do. And I bluntly know what I can bring to your stream. You don't get to pick and choose when you care about my skin that I can't erase. About my skin that's not a character sheet that you can go, uh, I don't want that anymore. I'm going to be this thing today. I exist and I'm going to continue existing. We exist and we're going to continue existing. And you're going to put some fucking respect on our names, on our value, on our worth, on us. Some of y'all... <laughs> Some of y'all are better performers than me on this website called Twitter. And I'm not saying I'm the best out there. Shit, I don't got a Tony. But some of y'all who I was fooled. I legit thought some of y'all cared. And it pisses me off that I let myself believe that. I did. I took all of the offers that I was given. I took everything and I said, thank you so much. You believe in me. You believe in what I'm doing for this community. And then two months later, you're back on your bullshit. We said it at the beginning of the stream. How many of y'all in this chat had Black Lives Matter in your uh, usernames on Twitter? Or BLM in your Twitter? Or a fist in your Twitter? And how many of y'all in this chat don't got that no more? And if you don't got that no more, why? Because you need a space for something else? Because we were a trend. Because we were something for you to put there so people saw visibly that you cared. But guess what? I make this joke all the fucking time. If you want to get into D&D &D terms, my ultimate stats are perception and insight. I can read through that bullshit. So I charge you, please understand what you do when you do it. Because guess what? Black people don't forget. We may forgive, but we don't forget. And we may not resent, but we remember. Tanya, you can go. Also, we yeah. broke our goal. I'm going to um, up it to another number that I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Um, I, while everybody was talking, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, when everybody in chat is going to know, we've got to be two to three times as good to get half as much recognition. I am college educated. I've got a computer science degree and I'm really smart. I don't like to talk about myself much. And y'all, I mean, Christina's probably giving me the dirtiest look right now because I'm like, no one look at me. Don't pay me attention. But when I am good at something, I'm really damn good at it. And what bothers me is when we are out here and we're doing this thing, there's always somebody that feels like we don't belong to space. We don't belong in the space that we've, you know, fought and clawed and got our way into. An example, uh, season five of Rivals. First season, we had a rotating DM. They'd never DM before. Someone in chat said, you know what will take the show to the next level? And they named Deborah Ann Wall as a DM. Like five black folks, I'm sorry, six black and brown folks couldn't handle a show we'd been doing for four seasons together. When D&D &D came to us, when the whole point of our show was to see that anybody could learn to play. Some of us were veteran players. Some of us had never played before our first episode in LA at Stream Many Eyes, where I got to meet Christina for the first time in person. And the fact that, you know, I'm doing Dungeon Crossing and there are people like, you know, love Ashley, she's, she's wonderful. You know, hopefully one day when COVID's over, we'll get to hang out. People are like, well, why isn't Ashley Johnson involved? Where's Jeff Kanata? You know, when is Shannon gonna be on Critical Role? Like y'all are coming to my island and I'm the DM. 
you just gonna ignore that a black chick is here teaching people how to do this and you're gonna pull out every name of every random white person that you know because you watch whatever show or you watch Critical Role, you watch Westworld. Like I just am incompetent and you decided on your own that you should, you know, take over a show that hadn't even been on yet or we'd had one episode. Like where, and I've met Jeff Kanata, he's a really nice guy, but they kind of forgot the point was to teach people D&D. I am more than capable. I'm gonna be a D&D in a castle next year, COVID willing. That's not something to take lightly. People pay me for my time to DM. But yet, I'm doing something fun and on my channel with other people, and there's still folks that will pull out every name of every white person instead of the person actually doing the work because they have to be black or brown. I'm older than d and So when you want to pull out credentials and act like we don't belong here, everybody in this, in this whole panel has more than enough time under their belt to run games, write games. We all write games. I'm working on like two RPGs right now, but yet nobody wants to talk about that. They want me to come and be their one time, one trick pony to show they ain't racist. Fuck that, because I am expensive. We're all expensive. So before we all think about this and the whole, well, I, you know, quality, we're all quality. In fact, we're probably better quality than some of the white people y'all always want to run out and go get. So think about that before you reach out to somebody going, we can't find any black people. Can you can you join our game? Especially when you ask me the day of. The answer is going to be a fuck in you and no. Have a good day. On that note, we're going to take a break. Because in case you don't know, where we're getting angry and mad. Some of us aren't angry, we get passionate. I'm fucking angry. I'll admit that. We need to take a break because this is emotionally taxing. We're giving this information to you for free. Obviously, we're not saying, hey, be in here or you're worthless. It's not about that. But we're giving you this service quite literally for free. And we're tired. So we're going to take a quick break to reconvene and understand ourselves and, uh, you know, bio, do whatever. We'll be back. We got a lot more shit to talk about. I know Brandon going to go the fuck off. Uh, so we'll be back. Uh, the deadest of asses, though, because I don't care. Pay us. Our, um, our coffees are right there. Um, and some of us will use it for um, other things to ben- benefit and better other black and people of color. But pay us. Thank you. We'll be back.
Oh, hey. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so this was a this is what happens when uh, Zoom decides to crap out on you um, for no reason. It might have been an update. But we're here now. I'm going to do some tech stuff while we talk about whatever. And honestly, I kind of want to hit on, um, um, you know what, I'm blanking. Uh, pick, a, pick a topic. No. No, okay, Christina, go. <laughs> but before we do, before we do, well, well, pick a topic. Gabe's gonna uh, gonna chat. Before we do, thank you all for being here. I love you all. Again, this is Tanya. This is Christina. This is Gabe. This is Brandon. This is Michael Sinclair II. This is Tanya and Dice. This is me. We're all black. We're all here. We're telling it like it is. I love you all. All right. Uh, You gotta change your audio source. Nope, it's because desktop audio wasn't on. Continue. Sorry, y'all. I'm a, I'm a silly boy. This can you is hear what me? happens. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. can you hear Going it? back to the point, I am not quitting. <laughs> I am not anybody else but Christina Ariel. And Quiddy and I are now on the same show, and we are like still getting confused for. They one still another. gonna fuck it up. Yeah, they still gonna fuck even it up. Even with a even with a lower third that says our names or an upper third, depending on the situation. You're telling me that you can't take the time to know that we are not the same people. Our acting styles are different. Our personalities are different. But y'all still out here saying, oh, hey, Quiddy. We were at D&D Live last year, and somebody had walked up to Abria right before they walked up to me to say congratulations on XYZ. And they do the same thing where there's like, congratulations on XYZ. We are not the same people. We are not. We are we are different people. She is beautiful. I love her. She's a rock star, but we are not the same people. And another thing, when you have us on your shows, I should not have to apologize to you when I call you out for problematic behavior. I should not have to bend myself into a pretzel to let you know that you are being offensive and to let you, like, I should not have to be afraid to tell you that what you are doing is hurtful. I should not have to tell you that my backstory will not be a slave backstory. I should not have to tell you that making me run from the cops is not a good idea. These are not things that I should have to tell you in 2020. Mm. Why can't I appear majestically on a thing and just exist? Why do I have to enter like a criminal? Even if my character is one of the goodest people you've ever seen. It is hurtful that that is your automatic place that you go to for a backstory. And this doesn't matter who you are. I am fuck. I don't care if you've been DMing and you were one of the greatest DMs in the history of DMing and Dungeons and Dragons. You don't get to give me a traumatic backstory that includes slavery so that you can tell a story of struggle that you don't know. You don't get to put me in a struggle place. Let me be and exist in this world. Let me do what I do. Going back to what I said earlier, creating my character for Dimension 20 was a big deal for me. The number of black girls, and I'm talking under 19, that are, I can cosplay this character. I can cosplay this character without a wig. I can cosplay this character using my natural hair. I can cosplay this character as I am is important. 
because black people exist in fantasy and they can't exist in fantasy. Y'all ain't watch Merlin? Even Gwen was black. I mean, like, give us space to be black people in this thing without you saying, oh, I need a slave story to call attention to it. You don't need a tragic black story, a back, well, you know what? Tragic black I mean, story. I mean, I mean, Ooh, I mean, I mean. <laughs> Ooh, tragic black story, hashtag oh, just popped that up one. like what? Rain? No, like <laughs> don't. It, it is exhausting to have to go out of my way to speak kindly to you when you are disrespecting me, and I should not have to worry about hurting your feelings when you are hurting mine. And so often, you guys are putting us in this position where it makes us the bad guy to say, "Hey, this art doesn't depict me properly. Hey, this isn't how I want to be seen. Hey, this isn't how I want to be delivered." But you're like, "Oh no, 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 no! It'll make sense. It'll make sense to them. Why?" Why is this necessary? Why can't I exist as a whole person in this universe without it being drawn to? But you can have giant 50 foot fucking creatures, but my black ass is the mystical one. I'll wait. No. Mm. Uh, go ahead. No, 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 you go. I was gonna say, and you're even an inspiration to me. Christina, because you're able to create these characters and people love them and they are representative of a, a reality that most people don't dare to explore unless they're using it for a gimmick purpose. I'll say that. So coming into the TTRPG space, I came from a background where I did a lot of writing I really didn't pay a lot of attention to ethnicity or appearances. I was paying attention to stories that needed to be told. And it allowed me to explore so many different cultures all around the world and do the work, the research to make sure I was representing them well. When I came into the TTRPG space and they're like, you're gonna be on camera and playing a character. I said, well, it's a joke that I'm a chocolate halfling. So, Let's go ahead and create a chocolate halfling. Um, and seeing the responses, the first time I played Biscuelia Honeysuckle in a charity stream, you know, I came in as Biscuelia Honeysuckle, AKA Biscuits, you know, and I saw a couple of chat comments and someone said it was the first time they had seen character art of a black halfling and they were so excited. <laughs> and I sit there room and I said, is it really that rare? And I had no idea. Um, but yeah, allow people to play their characters and explore the stories that they want to tell without somehow superimposing your imagine your personal imagination about what that character's reality should be because oftentimes you really don't know. And there's some tropes that are so overly done. Um, the idea that you can have a character with a happy backstory and they have darker skin being an anomaly. I just thought that was ridiculous. Not everybody wants to play drama. It's okay. It's okay to be happy. So, um, you're really low. Low. Got you. So something that I've thought about literally like every other day for the last month at least is, and this is me speaking of my experience, which means that if I feel this way, there's a chance that another black person who has some sort of reach does. Being a black person with influence on the internet is terrifying to me um, for a dozen reasons. One, I don't want people to misinterpret my anger and frustration as misguided or invalidated. And it happens a lot. I don't want to be that excuse someone wants to use to validate horrible choices 
racism, other nonsense. And I don't want, I don't want to have to be the view of the good one that some people have. Um, I, I really like think, uh, I had a conversation with my mother about it on the phone like a week ago. And she said something that like hit me in the, a genuine way because there was no malintent. She was like, Gabe, you might just not be built for what some people call fame. And I, I want to trust people have good intentions when they reach out to me. And even if it's not a majority, uh, it happens too often. And then I get terrified and I curl up. I have no problem saying this. I had an opportunity for a full-time job that was, um, I did the second interview, like video interview and everything. I did their exam and then they ghosted me. And I emailed twice to see if I, like, if I, to hear anything. And they ghost, and it's, it's, it came after the video interviews. In the emails, everyone was super excited. Um, could be anything, but there's no, it's impossible to know. Um, I, I want to be a diamond, but I don't want to have to become a diamond through pressure that came in a month. I want to be able to take that time to be refined. And I want to be, I want, I like, I like having visibility and influence because I want the me 10 years ago to see the me now someone who is the me 10 years ago now to see what I'm doing and be like, yeah, I can do that. And I don't want someone who's like the me from 10 years ago to have to look for someone that looks like them. I shouldn't, we shouldn't, no one should have to look for someone that looks like them doing these things in any industry. And people are like, well, I can name like, 10 black game designers, all right. Can every other person that you know do it? I, it's not saying there's a problem with white game designers. It's saying the people that are spotlighted are not diverse. When we see those lists and you're looking for the black person's name on it, why do you have to look? When you're saying, we're trying to find the black game developers. Why do we have to try to find them? Why do we need lists of them? And I like having that influence. I like having that reach. It's also scary as hell because I'm worried that I'm still not gonna be good enough. People reach out to me for opportunities and I'm like, why me? I'm not special, I, I am special. I belong here. Even if I feel like I'm the, if, even if I'm the only person that looks like me that is here, I belong here. And I should not have to reinforce that fact in my head, but I do. And I see all these people and like, I'm so glad that we're here together. <laughs> and I see the other things these people are doing and to no fault of their own, Why do I have to seek it out? I'm glad I can be a beacon for other Black people. The fact that that's what I can be is terrifying and fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Michael, um, Brandon, oh, Tanya, sorry, you're right. Um, while Gabe like took me to church and I ain't even Christian no more, damn. So while Gabe was talking, it made me think about it because, you know, Christi I know Christine and I have talked about it. Uh, Megan and I have talked about it a little bit with the whole, you are, you, people put you on a pedestal you ain't never asked to be on. And I am ornery, I'm grumpy, but also, I get freaked out when people are excited that I'm on a thing or whatever, and they got way more faith in me than I will ever have in myself. Can't talk about it yet, but also, you know, I'm doing a project that honey, what honey said, you, it's okay to be happy. That's the mantra of what I'm building. 
because there's too many stories where we suffer. Too many stories where we are killed off in the first five, 10 minutes, if we're there at all. Too many dystopian landscapes, fantasy landscapes where we're the non-humans. We don't get to exist. We don't get to do whatever. And it, you know, I just wanted to kind of ride on what Gabe said about how terrifying it is. And thinking about, you know, me and Omega were privileged enough to do some of the announcements for d and celebration. And without fail, there are people like, well, I feel conflicted and all this other stuff. And, and how could you do this? Or they, or they ran in with their whole fire murals. And it's like, they, and people act like we just said, fuck everybody. We're going to get some money and then go about our day, which is the furthest from the truth. Because here the thing is, I got to look at myself and the people, weird as it is to me, that look up to what I do or whatever, and it still weirds me out because I'm a weirdo and I don't know what to do with it. But the people that act like we can just walk off from contracts, we can break deals, we can you know break NDAs. Because let's be real, a lot of people that are the first ones to be in your mentions, well, how could you, how dare you? They want us to have this moral purity test that we will never ever pass. You don't know when we signed a contract. You don't know what the deal was. You don't know what else is going on. But everybody wants to be in your mentions. Well, I'm disappointed in you and you're doing blah, blah, blah. You know what? I still got bills to pay. You want to pay me for the attorney so I don't get sued into non-existence? Do you want to pay my rent for the next five years while I fight a court battle for breaking a contract or NDA? Be my guest. And it's terrifying because... We're just all trying to create and do things and, and prosper and bring other people with us. It's not just I'm out here and I'm trying to bring everybody on this panel along because, you know, I'm in a privileged position because it's privilege. It's not the same privilege as white privilege. Don't get it twisted because if I see it in chat, I'm going to go off after everybody else gets to talk because I will use the $15 words on you but it's a privilege to be in the position where you're on top for the moment. But just as fast as we're all on top right now, all it takes is one word, one person decide that you're a sellout, what have you. And I'm not gonna say cancel because we know cancel culture ain't real, it's bullshit. Everybody supposedly cancel still prospering more than we are. And it's just, it's terrifying. And I think people don't realize that is that as much as we've had to scrape and claw and and just climb over the people that think that they belong there and will apply to things and ain't got a scrap of experience and mistreat us and act like we don't belong and that we're taking over and we're the SJWs. You know what? I fought for my place at the table and in some places I've made one and I'm gonna always have a chair for somebody that deserves it. And I don't care who it is. If you want to come and do the work, you're welcome at the table, but everybody that thinks they deserve a place because they rolled dice for 20 years, fuck you. Just because you rolled the 20s for 20 years doesn't mean that you can write and design or that you deserve a spot because you're a white dude and you've been playing D&D or what have you for 20, 30 years. So it's, it's frightening and it's, it is also a place of privilege, but you know, we're also not going anywhere. And I'm, I'm getting into a little ramble, but I just want people to realize that for all the, for the people you see here, there's hundreds of other folks that aren't getting that shine, that didn't get pulled up in June, that didn't get pulled up in July, that aren't getting the coffee, that aren't getting the, the praise and the jobs and the opportunities. Those are the people y'all should be seeking out. I'm grateful and I'm going to turn that money back to people who need it more than me. But those Kickstarters that don't make it, that Black people are running, go find them. So... I want to quickly jump in um, and I'll let Michael Brandon go after me um, <clears throat> because I just want to, I want to go back to what Tanya said about she and I having the, um, the privilege to um, announce things for Wizard of the Coast. Um, grateful for the opportunity. Very much grateful for the opportunity. But she said it perfectly. That moral purity test bullshit. 
when we barely get anything, we're supposed to turn that one thing down. That big thing down, mind you. And don't act like we're sitting here being like, well, since we work for WotC, um, WotC is pure and never can do any wrong. That's not how it goes, because all of us, for the most part, has said something because shit can change. Shit needs work. We know this point blank period. But whenever a black person does something or a person of color, I, I even open it up a little bit. We're talking about black people right now, but I even open it up a little bit. Whenever people of color do these things for these high up companies, it is not your white ass job to go in with a certain hashtag that I'm very much overseeing. And you all know what it is. FMM. We all know what it is. I'm tired of seeing it. I want that to happen, but I'm tired of seeing it because you're acting like we're the ones who can change this shit. Do I look like Hasbro to you? We're just trying to exist, as I said already, and we're doing what we can to continue making sure that diversity is seen in these places that you want it to be seen. So whenever you say you're a sellout or why are you working with them still? You know what they did to you? I'm black. Of course I know what they did to me. There's nothing you can say that I don't know. And all that's in my head when I do these jobs. But at the end of the day, where you can gladly say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to walk away. There's five other opportunities lined up for you. The only thing that's lined up for me. I, I don't know. Because every day that passes, I still don't know what opportunities I'm going to get. They don't come to me like they come to y'all. They definitely don't come to Honey, Christina, and Tanya as black women in this, uh, in this community. So I need y'all to understand what you're doing when you do it. Trust me, we are fighting that fight much harder than you. Because while you can sit there and close your computer and throw all your expensive dice away... That's money we worked hard for and we won't be seeing for another five years at least. So when we get these jobs with wizards or whoever and you look at us and say, I can't believe you're doing that. Think about the fact that you even had the ability to say that. We say that shit blacklist. Guess we're not getting jobs then. <laughs> So understand, we're doing the work. We will always be doing the work. But we got to make our coin, too. We do. Point my period. When do y'all want to take over? Uh, I guess I'll go. But, um, yeah, I mean, CB, everyone in the panel has been saying, it. all our lives we got to fight, and we still fighting for these opportunities. Like, you know, we... we we have to overperform just to be seen. And when we get these opportunities, we try and grab these opportunities. I spoke into earlier that when we get these opportunities, you know, no matter what the work environment or whatever have be, like we come a hundred percent correct. We will be professional. We will do our due diligence. We'll do the whole thing. Um, you know, CB spoke into the opportunity they got, uh, he, he got and saying like, you know, he got to, preview something for this big company you know yes we're gonna do that because we're fighting for these opportunities to make sure that more of us come into it um and it's not like we aren't we're not spending our own money our own resources our own time to do this 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 most of this work ain't free we're not always getting paid for it like there is there is money we all know this stuff costs money there is money involved to to get the education of just think about it just to get the information of D, &D. just think about it player handbook dungeon master guide monster manual don't mind like the 50 11 other manuals there is brandon's over there doing his own thing trying to create his own thing pouring i'm sure his own money into making sure it, it stays it stays on like this is an investment we are going to keep fighting to be a part of it and bring other people there i i also play Magic of the Gathering, and people are like, you know, there's not much of us there. That's because there's, it's that hard to get into it, 
there's that much money involved. It's insane. Like we're going to take opportunity where we can, and we're going to try and bring other people up with us. Uh, it, I can't even speak to how like people want it. We're, we're trying to be the example, not even be the example. We are doing our best as people to show up in these spaces, to bring other people into these spaces. And when you want to shift that focus into something that has nothing to do with it, it is frustrating. That's why we get frustrated because it's like, what's all this work, all this money, this time, this sacrifice? On top of that, we all have lives. Christina's a mom. Brandon's doing stuff for his own thing. Omega, you know, is trying to figure out what to do in this environment because his main thing isn't a thing. Gabe spoke into it. Gabe up and, you know, he's changing careers. Tanya got things she's doing for companies. And Honey and Dice is trying to manage information systems. Like, and I'm a computer science student. None of this shit's easy. And we're all sacrificing here. So if you see us trying to bring other people in space be be an example or, or or try and be professional and you want to bring stuff into light that like first of all we know like cb said we know what's going on but it's it's not our we you can't even like we got here and now you want us to do all this extra and yet we, we're not even the space, like it's special for us to even be there in the first place. So you want us to be fucking, God damn it. You want us to be fucking special. And then you want us to fucking, to carry the fucking torch all at the fucking same time. Like, are you insane? Like on top of just being a, a person. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta carry your weight. Like we gotta carry your weight and carry our own and everyone else who we're trying to help. You're throwing more weight on us. Like, that doesn't make sense. But it's easy for you to offload it on us and be like, here you go, take this. And if you don't do something with it, you're done. We've been doing the work. We've been carrying the load. We haven't ever taken off the load. That's all we got. So realize when, you, when you're trying to say that stuff online, we're in the know. We, Brandon. So for me, I just, man, this kind of goes like piggybacks on the being put on the pedestal, but I feel sometimes it's, it's like, is it a pedestal or is it a baseball tee? Because sometimes it feels like people just build you up so they can, and it's like, what's the point of this? It's like, there's a joy sometimes I feel like people get when they're ready to tear you down. Like they've been waiting all week for you to say that one thing, so then you'd be like, well, but you said this, and actually, and it's like, why, why are you spending all this time to try to invalidate what we're saying when you could have been spending that time listening to us, processing it, like thinking about it, and then they want to turn around and get their feelings hurt when they don't get the reaction that they want to get. Like, I'm not, I'm not here for debate. I'm not, I'm not going to be the one black person to assuage your 89 questions that you had and make you feel better. And if you make me be that person, I'm not going to have that discussion on your terms. I'm going to have it on how I want to have it. And currently, and places like Twitter, you're on my Twitter, you're on my feed. So if you come to my feed and my space and demand answers from me, you're going to get it my way. And I think that's just something that people need to understand. Like, it, it, I think that they'll say Black Lives Matter and they want to say they get it, but then they want to come into your space and explain things to you. And it's like, mm, everybody who's over 21 and Black pretty much has a PhD in white culture because you're required to. But you don't know about us. That's why you're here looking goofy, asking questions. So they'll want to come to the space and ask questions, but won't take on that understanding that you are automatically the student. You have nothing to teach me. And it's, it's, a, 
it's an ego thing that they don't want to let go. And it feels like it always gets in the way of teaching, of a teachable moment. Because it's like, look, I'm sorry that your culture has built you up on feeling like you have to have this win in the conversation, that you have to have this win and be like, yeah, I had this argument with a black person and I came away and I won. Like, there is no cookie. And it gets eternally frustrating that it feels like I have to balance between trying to look amenable on the internet and telling you exactly what I want to tell you, which is most likely some variation of fuck off. But then everybody else goes, well, they were just being innocent, just ask the question. And it's like, but we've had the same question. Like today alone, I might've had that question three or four times. Did you not see when I asked that question before? Do none of you see when other of your peers ask those questions? Do you never link up and go, hey, I had this question. Oh yeah, I heard about so-and-so on this Black as Fuck podcast. Do you not like link up and share information? Like that's what confuses me. It's like every person comes by, like they freshly popped out the room and were like, time to learn about black problems. And it's like, do you, do you just skip class, skip Google, skip books, skip everything through Netflix? like? You know what I mean? Like, at some point, I realized you had to go out of your way to be this ignorant. Like, life can hand you a lot of disadvantages, but at some point, you have to understand that, like, if you see Black people and there's a struggle and you hear some stuff on the news, maybe you need to do some homework. And if you're going to come and make us do the emotional work, A, pay us. And B, if you're not going to pay us, then you're going to have to accept, like, whatever terms that conversation is on. Because it's usually not going to be nice, especially after a shooting. A shooting will happen, and then people will ask you the most mundane questions, and then be just, "Oh, I don't, I, I just, is it, was this going to upset you, or, 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 or it's like, well, you, you're asking me, so that means you probably know, but you want me to give you permission for what you already want to do, and for what you're already trying to do, of which you'll guilt me if I tell you no." And it's always a setup. So I feel like half of my life is avoiding people setting up traps for me. And like everybody else was saying, like being fame and black, especially on the internet, it's weird. Like I, it's hard for me sometimes because I forget where I am. I'm used to just being me all the time. And you look around and everybody's staring at you and that random tweet that you sent while you were in the toilet at 6 a.m. barely up, you walk back an hour later and it's like 400 likes. You're like, whoa, hey, like, everything's not gospel but you're the only black person in their room so now you're preaching so now you gotta go get at your sources and everything and it's just it's beyond tiring and then it's like the second you are not a hundred percent right time to knock you off off the pedestal because they've been waiting or there's been someone behind them who's been waiting who doesn't like you because you said this one thing they didn't like because you were right maybe not right but they didn't like it so they're waiting like i have a whole hate squad <laughs> i know everybody else has hate but I have a legit hate squad. Like, how many people can say you have five people devoted to making videos about you every two weeks? Google sorts fall on YouTube one time. And anything that's not me or, like, something I've been on, you'll find just treasure troves because they just they can't do anything. So that's, they spend their time. And that's what you have to deal with being black, just for the act of having a cool Kickstarter. So we'll make videos about this guy forever because... And there's never a reason, you know? And then people will be like, how can I help? I'm like, how about you go to their channel and I don't know, be shitty to them. <laughs> I don't know. Like if you know the friends that are being terrible and racist, I don't know, come get them. Like, but stop making it about us. And it's just over the last two months, especially from, which I'm glad about the, the, the black as fuck, but then people will come to me like, uh, I have these like solutions, like John Lewis level. And it's like, whoa, like there's, there's other people out there that have asked those questions and i'm glad that like we've said stuff that has hit you but like you got to do that work too you can't just take everybody I every mean, like that first black opinion that you like and they want to run with it forever and it's just not about it and i'm super tired of that and that's 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 the thing that's been keeping me the most is just the want to find a solution but it's not really a solution. It's that, oh, well, I feel better now because we went to that cast and everything feels great. And it's more than that. And just because we're famous doesn't mean we have all the answers. Doesn't mean all the answers are right. It's just our individual answers. And that has to be respected, but they'll take one answer and try to apply it to everything. Like, well, my one black friend said, it's like, that's cool. That's, that's for them. This is for me. Respect that. And that's my piece. Hi. We're not
not responsible for your guilt. We're not responsible for explaining to white people why racism exists when we are the victims of racism. It is not the onus of fixing the problems of racism has been on our shoulders for an extremely long time. Mom's got notes because that's what I do. First of all, we love Christina Ariel, by the way. Let's see. First of all, check your articulate at the door. You should not be surprised that I know how to use basic English and that I use it well. It should, it's not a compliment. You're pretty for a black girl. That's dumb as fuck, bitch, I'm fine. For a reason. And it's not because I'm black, it's not because I'm not white. I'm not pretty for a black girl, bitch, I'm just pretty. You don't have to qualify my attractiveness. My face is symmetrical as fuck. Carrying on. It doesn't make me weak that I don't want to have to deal with racism as it regards to my family. My husband is white. My oldest son is white. My child is biracial. That's none of your fucking business. You don't come from my family. For you to say that I speak on black issues, how dare I you feel bad for my family because I called you out on it? You don't get to feel shit about my family because it's not your fucking business. Keep my kids' names out your mouth. Keep my husband's name out of your mouth. My husband's white privilege does not extend to me. My husband's white experience does not extend to me. It does not nullify my experience. It does not take away my existence. It does not change my walking and maneuvering through the world as a black woman. Hold on. You don't get to invalidate my experience. I don't have to make you feel better about your guilt. It is not my problem. It is not my problem that you did not learn about Rosewood. It is not my problem that you did not learn about Tulsa. And I don't need to hear that you didn't learn about it. Read a fucking book. There's a whole ass movie. I was, what, like 10 years old when I watched Rosewood with my family as a family movie night where I got to see an entire town of black successful people that they had built for themselves wiped out because one white woman lied on a black dude, which is a conversation we're not going to get into, but y'all need to keep those tears in check when you're trying to call somebody a predator for asking you a question. I'm not aggressive. I'm honest. I'm blunt. I'm in your face. I'm going to tell you about yourself, but you don't get to come to me and cry because you were wrong. My hurt feelings don't get overshadowed by the fact that my telling you that you are being offensive, problematic, troublesome, and you continue to do it, that's not on me. That is a sit down, examine yourself, have a conversation with yourself, talk to Jesus, talk to somebody, but don't talk to me because I didn't do it to you. There's a reason that you are responding the way that you do. There is a reason there is a guilt and that is something that you need to work on yourself. That is not, I need to find a black friend to assuage all of my bad feelings. That is not, hey, you know what? I know that the last couple of months and your entire life have been hard, but here are my feelings about it. This is why I feel bad. Make me feel better. And all of you people who are like, I attack people in my comments when they come in. I go to your comments and I check people. I pile on after you've already said enough to check a situation. I'm going to keep flooding your mentions with me checking this person so that you see just how woke I am. Or you decide to go and make pictures of yourself or show yourself or retweet yourself being woke and checking people while you're saying the exact same thing that I know for an honest fact that I've said to you in conversation, that you're relabeling my words and passing them off as your own as if it's something that you know while you continue to not only use my words, you continue to do the same action you're calling out. You continue to not be an ally and get offended when you're called out for not being an ally while throwing in my face the person who is experiencing and going through something that you're an ally. Fuck that word. What are your actions? What are your actions beyond 240, 180 characters? What are you doing outside in the world? 
What are you saying to your racist family members who, let's get into it, decided that they were tired of hearing about Black people being murdered, so they decided to care about QAnon. They decided to buy into a crazy-ass conspiracy theory, which, because they would rather think about that and go protest that and show up for that than feel guilty for five minutes. Okay. We are not responsible for your shit. It is not on us to make you feel better about yourself. I, in the last few months, have dealt with people saying, hey, I'm sorry that your dad died. Can you boost my Kickstarter? Hey, I'm sorry that your dad died, but can you share this status for me? Hey, I'm going through some shit, and I know that you're going through some shit too, but please let me prioritize my business over your pain. I could screenshot and shame the fuck out of you, but I don't. But I could. Because I don't want to. When I got on the internet and decided that this is what I was going to do with my life, I decided to be happy to share my joy and my joy is sufficient. My pain is not performative, it is honest. When I put myself on the internet, it is honest. It is me giving of myself. I don't have to. And I will check you without checking my language and making myself palatable to you because I don't have to be. We do not have to make ourselves palatable because we were born enough. We are and always will be enough we may not be enough for you and that is your problem and you need to start asking yourself what is my problem why am i defensive why am i getting upset that this person is honestly sharing their pain and vocalizing what they are going to instead of grabbing onto their words and using them to check someone else check yourself Check yourself when you are asking us to be on these panels and asking us to lessen ourselves to make you comfortable. You are asking us to sit in discomfort to make you feel better about yourself so you can look woke, so you can feel woke, so you can go on the internet and say, I did X, Y, Z. Hey, Christina, I did X, Y, Z. Hey, CB, I did X, Y, Z. Hey, Tony, I did X, Y, Z. Hey, da, 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 da. did you see when I did this? I don't care. I don't care and I don't have to. I am trying to do the best that I can be and be as joyful as I can be and put my joy into the world. And I still have to deal with harassment and have people say, you asked for it. You asked for this. You want to be successful. I get to call you the N word. I get to call you X, Y, Z. I get to call you out your name. Do I have a fucking respite when I go to therapy? Because you know what my therapist said to me a couple weeks ago? Who was now fired? He said, oh, I understand what you're feeling, even though they assigned me a white dude therapist. And he said, I understand what you're feeling. My son went to Hawaii and they called him da 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 da, which is the Hawaiian equivalent of calling someone a nigger with a hard R. And expected me to sit in this therapy with him for the rest of my therapy life. Because that's, you have to correlate it to something you understand to make my experience palatable. No, thank you. Check yourself. Check why you think that everything has to be palatable to your experience, relatable to your experience that you know for a fact is a smoother walk than mine. No matter what your equitable status, no matter how much money you make, you can still walk in that room and be you without making sure that you is good enough. But everyone on this panel, everyone in my life, everyone that is out here that I know that is in this space, you are enough. You have been enough. You don't have to prove you're enough. You don't have to prove you're articulate you don't have to prove any of those things because you are valid you are enough you have been enough from the time you popped out that damn womb no matter if the person who popped you out was about shit or not that doesn't matter you are enough i'm done <clears throat> these Panels are hard because I have to hear the pain vocalized that I have been reading 
from people that I very much care about. I'm not in the position of someone who has, who's on the receiving end of a lot of negativity now. I have been in my online career, so to speak. And I made a lot of changes in how I approach things because that's not something I can handle. Once the FBI has to get involved in the situation, you just kind of, it's just not something I can deal with. So I curate my space very carefully. I have a very special approach. But one thing that I'm seeing across all the various spectrums of marginalized communities that I do my best to support is not only the tendency to trade an ism for an ism, as in race, this person was being racist, so I'm going to be ableist. This person was being ableist, so I'm going to be sexist. This person was being sexist, so I'm going to go and be racist, and so on. So returning pain for pain does not ever get to a place of healing. It just stays this festering wound that never, never gets any relief. So I'm sitting here and I'm wondering, is it really that hard? Is it really that hard to be caring and empathetic? Is it really that hard to read about somebody's successes, somebody's challenges, somebody's pain, somebody's experiences? And as your, your cursor hovers over that, that like or that retweet or that comment, is it really so hard to just say, this is not about me, but I want to draw positive attention to this. So let me retweet, or this is not about me. So let me do a little silent like of support so that they know someone is thinking about them. When you put your keyboard to work and you comment, do you ever ask yourself, is this needed? Is this a value add? Or is this just me being performatively self-gratifying to show that I am part of this conversation? If something is not about you, you know you didn't push somebody out of an elevator. You know you didn't spit in someone's food you know you didn't insult somebody's child. If it's not about you, why do you have to try to make it about you? Why do you need to be involved in a conversation that's not yours? And don't think I'm not seeing, even with the safety like tools being added to social media, like Twitter finally giving you the opportunity or the option to turn off replies. If someone has turned off replies, they obviously don't wanna have a conversation or get comments about something. Was it really needed to retweet it with a comment just so that you can be heard? Is that something that needed to be done? Does that put food on anyone's table? Does that put a roof over anybody's head? Does it make anybody's life better? Does it even make your own life better? So why? Why in 2020, in whatever generational gap you fall in, do we seem to be getting worse when it comes to valuing each other as human beings first? Compared to all the panelists on here, I really have the less, the least credits participation and everything. And that's not me being down on myself. That's just facts, not bad facts. I'm new to this space. It's just facts. So when I say I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about opportunities that should be available, open and welcoming to anybody. 
that is who I am at my core, whether I'm online or offline. So I just want you all to ask yourselves before you comment and involve yourself in a conversation that it's not about you, your experiences or what you are going through. How are you making a, the world a better place, a safer place by what you are doing? Um, well, honey, you have like stopped me in my tracks. I, I had this whole angry rant about to go off on that. I'm thinking about Christina, but I, I want to, I want to talk about the, the thing you mentioned with like, you know, setting it. So like not everybody can reply to a tweet or so nobody, except for the people you mentioned can reply to a tweet and then you don't mention anybody. And the fact that our boundaries are trampled over online, in discords, in games, and sometimes from even other Black folks, because I'm going to be the angry chick that brings up the skin folk that ain't kin folk every fucking time. Because sometimes a lot of us do the worst things to each other. And don't, don't get excited and think I'm talking about no Black on Black crime. That's not what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people that can't hold their peace to then jump in and go, well, you know, I'm black too. And I'm not out here complaining. We had somebody in chat who tried to pull that earlier in the first half of the, of the discussion, or you need to be quiet and let people just do what they want to do. Cause it irks me to no end when any of us talk about a thing. And then when we bring it up, it's, oh my God, that still happens. And I'm like, have you not looked outside or have you not read a newspaper or the internet news or followed any black people on Twitter? But also you're calling us liars when I say X, Y, Z happened and then you're surprised it still happened in the year of our Lord, whatever you pray to or not, 2020. But the idea that our boundaries don't mean anything to anybody. When I would tweet about things, when I talk about race, talk about et cetera, now I use that feature more and more of you can't reply if I don't follow you or you can't reply at all unless I message you. And yet time and time again, people ignore that because they wanna retweet something and add their two cents literally before this panel. When I talked about people adding that tag, as Omega said, to any and everything about RPGs, someone not only quote tweeted it, but use the tag when I went out of my way to not use the tag so I could just say this one thing. And it's like, well, I guess fuck my boundaries, fuck my safety. And the fact that we can't even have conversations, like there's very few places we can have conversations. Nuance does not exist on Twitter, does not exist on Facebook, if you're on there still. And the fact that we can't have spaces to talk without our words being regurgitated, not just for woke points, but for profit. How many people will sit there, take exactly what we say, how we say it, and put it back out on Twitter, or they'll, they'll do the amen chorus, and then don't learn a damn thing. They'll be out here doing the same thing week after week. And it's like, we're just, we're just things to some people. We're educational tools. And if we don't fall in line with educating them and holding their hand and saying you're a good white person, a lot of people don't wanna hear what we have to say. And I know that after we're done and probably while we're live, there's people on the internet mad because we're telling our truth or they wanna go, I didn't know it was so bad. How have I never known this? Because you don't follow and acknowledge black people as people. Our autonomy and our personhood is not respected. So before people get in their feelings and go, well, I never said that, I'm not talking to you personally. And the last thing is, and this is a thing that irks me and Christina may laugh, she may not. A lot of people will do and say racist shit and then turn around and go, well, I have a mental illness. You know what? I have depression, anxiety, I was medicated for it. Actually, I take leave from a job because of it. You don't see me spouting racist shit just because I'm upset and angry and then blaming it on the fact that I have depression and anxiety. If you say that shit, that's in your heart anyway. 
So let's not play that game or act like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I, I have no place. We ain't taking over shit. Do you know we're like 10% of the population? When y'all want to be excited and say we're taking over, we're not. And the fact is a lot more people are scared of us actually taking over than of us ever actually wanting to do it or being capable of it. Because I'm trying to take care of my high yellow ass until I die and take care of the people I care about. So y'all can figure it out. You cannot, you can listen, you cannot, but don't get in our mentions after this panel and be salty because we told you about yourselves and the things you do because we see you. We see you on Twitter. We see you in our DMs. And I'm just gonna start screenshotting folks because I am out of give a fuck. I'm gonna piggyback on that for two seconds. And it's it's important that you understand that we're not saying that mental illness isn't a thing and we're not being disrespectful to mental illness. Truthfully, I know I have undiagnosed mental illnesses. I just haven't had the, the courage to go in and understand them myself because of things that I've gone through as a child. Um, but please understand what we say while we say that. Christina, go ahead real quick with that one. I'm gonna come take it back from you. Sorry, I just have to say this real quick. You were looking at a person whose depression drove them to go to their therapist's office and say, I am tired of my life. Every day that I drive home from work in 2010, I said, I want to drive my car off of the side of the road and not a single person in this world will miss me. That is the way that I felt. That is what I did. I wanted to end my life. I was tired of everything. I was done. Do not come to me and use your mental illness against me and say, I don't understand and try to emotionally manipulate me by saying, because let's do this since this panel has started. Don't tell me that maybe I shouldn't exist because I was called out on my behavior. I would never wish that on anyone. We would never wish harm on someone else for going through the pain that we know. But mental illness is frowned on in the black community is a general rule. It is seen as a weakness to go and seek help for your mental health. I was embarrassed and ashamed to go and get help for my mental health. I was, I lost my job. I lost my boyfriend at the time. I lost everything because my boss told me that I was a threat and a liability. And I said, I would never hurt anyone. I only wanted to hurt myself. And she said, we're scared for the girls to be around you because you went to the hospital for your mental health and you were on medication. You were, you're a liability. So please do not in the year of our Lord 2020 come to me and try to manipulate me into feeling bad for you because when I say your mental illness is not an excuse for your racism. It is not an excuse for you to come at any of us and try to make us feel bad on a daily basis and a comment that ain't got jack shit to do with shit. To make us feel bad about it and say that it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. I have the utmost empathy for people that can own their mental illness and go with what they're dealing with. And even the people that don't have the resources to go and do that. But don't try to weaponize that shit against me. Do not weaponize a battle against me that I am fighting myself and try to say that I don't feel it for you because I do. But if you are going on every single solitary day and I have backtracking logs for two years of you trying to make me feel bad and say, oh, it was my mental illness, it was my mental illness, don't do that. It is manipulative. It is emotionally manipulative to come after people and try to make them feel bad for you to get them to share your shit. I'm sorry. like. I don't mean this in any way. Once again, this is my own battle too, but do not use that battle as a weapon. Do not use your illness as a weapon because it is not fair. It is not fair to try and make someone feel bad because you want some internet notoriety. That shit is hurtful and it's dangerous to do so because like, I can't even phrase it properly, but don't put us in that position to say, hey, I know you're dealing with these issues as a black person, 
but my issue is this and da, 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 as if black people don't experience mental health issues too. And we aren't allowed or given the space to truly deal with them, let alone, I watch a motherfucking reality show called Married at First Sight. And this black man said, I am having issues with my mental health and I sometimes deal with depression. And the lady said, I see you as weak and less than a man. It does not make you less than a man. It does not make you less than a black man. It does not make you less than a person to admit that you have a mental health issue. I talk to my children about it every day. Emotional maturity and health is important. Talk to a therapist if you can afford it. Find a sliding scale or talk to somebody, but do not weaponize it and say that that is the excuse for my action. CB, just the quickest moment and mm -hmm. I, I will pass it over. But mental illness, like that's, that's a fucking move. And let me tell you, being a black man, being a veteran, seeing the shit that I've seen, like I've never popped off on someone, but the moment there's that time, like we, I'm popping off. Cause that's, I'll tell you, I've seen some shit and I've dealt with some shit and I've all the people who hate us, who hate me, like there's specific people who hate us. I have done the tippy top of what you can do, which is save service members for fucking eight months, all day, every day. And not even that, nationals. And so when someone's like trying to weaponize mental health, I never, I never imagine doing that to someone else. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pop off on you because I don't feel great that day. This is my internal struggle. I'm gonna go find resources and you see me online on Twitter speaking about it because I want to be inclusive. I use it to empower, not to disempower or to use as a weapon. So there is no, there is no excuse for that. And if, and if you notice that pattern and if people are speaking to you, you definitely can go see help and, and get that sorted out. But that's, that, that ain't the move. I'm just going to tell you right up, straight up. That's, that's not the move, CB. I was saying it was, um, it was very poignant that Tanya brought that up because I'm trying to do this really good thing for black people today. And I'm not going to even name names. I'm not going to name companies, but a certain company retweeted that we were live because that's the relationship we have and I'm appreciative of them. And someone decided to say, well, I can't watch because CB blocked me. And then when we called that thing out, their first response was, I just feel like because of that hashtag, which was mental illness, they didn't want me to be around anymore. And that was even me paraphrasing. And again, as someone with 100% undiagnosed mental illness, that ain't cool. Especially weaponizing that shit against, against a black man. That is quite literally the shit that gets people like me killed. Which is why I'm going into this next segment of us winding down. People like to say, what's an actionable item you can give? What is something that we can take away from? We can take away and, and ponder over um, as things end. And it's still in that same vein, but some of y'all not about to like me right now. At all. And I say this firstly to say, I was raised by my mother. I was raised by my aunt. I was raised by my sister. Women have been people I look up to since day one. So don't come at me with some, you're, some, you're a sexist, because that's not where I'm coming with this. White women, you can be just as racist as white men are. I'm gonna say that again. White women, you can be just as racist as white men are. Ta not sorry, my, my apologies. Christina mentioned how whenever black folks say they deal with something, someone else had to say, yeah, because as a blank, I understand a Prescott Olympics and Q. But for some reason, white women specifically, yes, you are a marginalized group and I will fight for you tooth and nail. Always. But for some reason, white women don't afford that same courtesy to black men. 
I'm gonna say that again. White women don't afford that same courtesy to black men. Don't forget, Barbecue Becky was a thing. We call them Karens for a reason. And sometimes you're more racist because you should understand that we as also marginalized people have to deal with shit. But instead you say, I, well, I, I, I deal with it too. So why are you the victim when I can use my own, my own privileges still? Don't forget that when you could vote, I couldn't. Don't forget a white woman killed Emmett Till with her words. A white woman killed the Scottsboro boys with her words. I can keep going and I'm not going to. My actionable item is understanding your privileged white women. We will fight for you tooth and nail, but please do the same for us. Because at the end of the day, you, yes, you are a woman, but guess what? You have more rights than Tanya, Christina, and Honey do. And guess what the main difference is? It ain't y'all hair. I'm not coming for you when I say this. I'm really not. But I have been silently seething for about a month. And not to call him out, but I can tell you, Gabe knows this. I talked to him about it. But I can't say that out loud as a black man because then I'm the sexist. And then every white woman on Twitter is coming for me. And guess who getting canceled? Even if I'm in the right. I fight hard enough already. And I'm going to fight for everyone else as well. Because that's what black people do if you didn't know that. We don't just fight for ourselves. We fight for Everyone. Because when one person falls, we all fall. It's a fucking domino in this bitch. So never get it twisted. I will fight for you all day. I just ask that you white women do the same for us black folk. That's my actionable item. I'm going to go around the, 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 the list, the, the folks on screen, and just give something to end on. Sorry, it's not going to probably end on a good note, y'all, but that's our life. Nothing is really good. It's just reality. Could Tanya, go. Uh, learn to listen. And when you see things, you ain't got to reply. Like it, retweet it, and move the fuck on. I don't need your sob story. I don't want your sob story. I don't want your 20 tweet long winding tale of how you helped somebody once in college and it changed your life and your you're a better person, but people on Twitter are mean to you. I give not nary a Kentucky Fried fuck. Just like it, tweet it, and move on and learn to listen. Christina? Vote, 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 vote. I did not have family members fight for the right to vote. John Lewis, who you were probably sharing a really cool picture of and saying, get into good trouble, did not live his entire life getting his ass beat on the Edmund Brennan's Bridge for you to not vote and for you to say you're not comfortable with some shit. We are in the face of, I'm not, like, just look at it. Look at the DNC and the, the message of hope and they're on their bullshit. Don't act like I'm not stupid. Don't act like black people don't know that most people are not voting in our fucking interest. But stop voting in your own interest and vote outside of yourself. It is not about you or your money and what keeps your money in your pocket when we can't even get it done. This is not about you. This is about black people that have to deal with people coming in and shooting up your church and going and getting Burger King. People going and shooting protesters who were upset because a black man was shot seven times in the back in front of his children. And that person who decided to come and shoot black people at an event standing up for that were shot. And you know what happened to that dude? He fucking went home. 
This is not about you. This is not about, none of us are fucking happy with it. But we cannot progress if we have someone who is going to take every bit of progress away. We do not get ahead if you are sitting here talking about your fucking feelings or you decide to deal into the hypersexualization of a black woman by saying Joe and the Ho. And all these things that you want to say and put out there and enough, man. You know good and fucking well that that man doesn't have your best interests or ours but you're willing to look at your pocket and your bank account and say, fuck everybody else. Fuck the children. Fuck all of these people that are in places of danger because uh, it doesn't line up with my morals that I just decided I have yesterday. Get your fucking shit together. Go out there. People didn't die for you to sit on your fucking ass and protest. We don't have the luxury of protests. I sat in 2008 with my great grandmother who is no longer on this earth and was one of the most amazing fucking women I've ever met in my life. And she watched a black man come into office and she was happy for the hope that it brings. She didn't think everything was solved, but she still got up in her eighties and went and voted. Voting every election every single solitary one and make sure you were reading about the people you were voting for because all women aren't for women. Um, all black people aren't even for black people. Watch the RNC and you know that shit's true. Get up off your ass and go vote. Don't joy be the shit. Represent your people. Stand up. Go vote. If you have to vote by mail, you can do that shit now. I've already gotten that shit ready. Get off of this chat when we are done and go register to vote. You want to talk about an actionable item? They don't want you to vote because they know the power of your vote. They know the power of your voice and they will say everything and anything to keep you from getting off of your ass and doing the bare minimum of registering and get something sent to your house. Fucking do it. Vote. Shut up and vote. Oh, well, you know, the the, the Democrat, you don't fucking care. You don't fucking care. I don't care about what's trending. Do what's going to save lives and keep kids out of cages. Do what's going to save lives and fucking check the police so that they stop fucking killing us in the streets so we don't have to do shit like this no more. So that we can just exist without you getting to pat yourself on the back because you had a first black something in 2020. Gabe. Did you say Gabe? Sorry, it sounded like I said Gabe, but that's me, not you. Um, continue to give visibility to the things that we do and things that other black people do because as it becomes more common and as it becomes normalized then we don't have to keep looking as hard as we do now if i can scroll through tabletop tags on twitch or i can scroll through twitter and see other creators that look like me then that's friggin' awesome. Because if I'm looking for those artists or writers or designers, I will go looking for them. I should not have to search. I, I think that's it. I should not, look, we should not have to search. It. They talked about retweets. It makes a difference. People see the things I do, anyone here does. And it might not be for them, but it might be for another person. That's how community works. And if community, if, if community doesn't work, then nothing changes. And unless we do something for change to happen, it doesn't and, and we're just miserable. Brandon. So I'm gonna be the radical and simply ask people to think about what are you going to do if nothing happens? Brandon, what if come, you vote? come back from your mic just a little bit. What if we vote and Trump decides not to leave? Everybody wants to rely on hope. Everyone wants to say, don't get me wrong, I agree with voting. I'm just saying what's going to happen when those things don't happen. 
And it's something that people don't want to say and don't want to pretend, but we've been rioting, hasn't stopped the police. So I, my actual item is to my white friends, what are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. Be in the streets. <laughs> Honestly, like dead ass, you know? So I just want to know what people are going to plan to do because if you're going to say vote and give these things and, and give to, to black folks, but when it comes time, not do anything, what's it all for? So when things go bad, what are you going to do? Actually, what are you going to do? Write it down on a piece of paper. What are you going to do? And if you can't write something down, then you have something to think about. And that's my piece. Michael. Yeah, actionable item. I'm gonna get mad. Straight up. Do your fucking research. Okay. It ain't it ain't hard. I'm in there every fucking day. I open my browser in the morning, I do my fucking research. It don't matter what it's on, I'm doing my fucking research. What Christina's talking about to go vote, it's about doing your research. What Gabe is saying, it's about doing your research. It's all it's it's information. You need it. Like you're actively or inactively avoiding it for voting look at your research and and look at the local things that are that are happening you don't believe in like you know things happening at the federal level you know you got a neighborhood to the left of you you look out every day and you're like trying to speed through because you don't feel great do your fucking research wonder why follow the money you'll see every time you, you do your research, you follow the money, you're going to find it every time. All the problems we stated today. Follow the money, do your research. Every time you'll find it, 100%. That's all you got to do. There's always a reason why people are treated badly, no matter what marginalization, Black, POC, you know, Indigenous, LGBTQ. There's someone profiting off people making someone miserable. You just gotta do your research. I know that doesn't sound great as an actionable item, but if there's that little that little hint, that little figment that just speaks to you, why is this the way it is? Look it up. There's tons of resources online. It ain't hard. That's that's my actionable item. Honey. <sighs> I'm always going to encourage people because I feel that if everybody got this down pat, we would start to see change. And apparently this is some of the hardest things to do, but be kind, which means celebrating people's successes, be caring. That means supporting them through their challenges. Be compassionate. That means being there for them through the ups, the downs, the happies, the sads, the funny posts, the um, depressing posts, being there for them. So be kind, caring, and compassionate. And I tell people to surround themselves with people who celebrate their successes, support their challenges. And if you cannot say you can be that for someone else, then that is an action item that you really need to take time to develop. Love in and of itself is an action item. Words is just complacency. So please don't let words become good enough. Be kind, caring, and compassionate. That's all I have. I'm just going to break that down for you all real quick, just in case you didn't listen as much as I wanted you to. From Tanya, like it, tweet it, move on, and learn to listen. From me, in a few words, check your privilege. Step back, realize why you're saying something with that privilege you have, learn from it. From Christina, simply fucking vote. Vote. From Gabe, 
See people of color. See black people. Seek them out. Don't wait for them to come to you. From Brandon, when things go fucking bad, what are you going to do? Not your friend, not your pappy, not your little cat that you love more than black people. What are you going to do? From Michael, do your fucking research. Point blank, period. And from Honey, be kind. Celebrate people's successes. Love in and of itself is an action item. That's all, y'all. I want to thank y'all for being here. Because I'm happy to see folks in this chat listening. There are a lot of people who weren't. Don't get it twisted. And guess what? They're bliggity blocked. But for those of you who actually came, one, you don't get a cookie for doing it. Two, we're not going to pat you on the back for doing it. But we do appreciate your presence. Because we're just trying to educate however much Google is free. We're just trying to get it through your skulls that we're here and we're not going anywhere. I also want to give a big ass shout out to I Need Diverse Games. We have raised $4,435. And before the end of the stream, I know we can get to $4,500 just because I said so. And I want Tiny to talk again about I Need Diverse Games and what its mission is and what they're going to do with this. Tiny. Um, so our mission is to get more people in the industry, both making games, on stage at events. And this includes tabletop games because that was my first love is in gaming so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sweeten the pot and make it six thousand dollars for my new diverse games on money and uh put out a note to streamers that want to upgrade their system that want to you know get a nicer camera get a light or something have an application process there's gonna be six thousand dollars total for people to request so if you've seen Thousand Dreams Fund that is aimed toward women and non-binary folks, we're going to do the same, but we're going to aim for Black and POC streamers because for a lot of people, just getting a nice headset, just getting a decent camera, that's a stopping point because all the stuff that we got, we've all been streaming for years or months or close to a year. So uh, if we can do that for somebody who wants to stream or just wants to upgrade their setup, that's what we're going to do. And so thank you all for doing that. Because I know when I started streaming, you know, a better headset, better camera would have made a, a world of difference. So and thank you, Omega. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, you know, being real kind, especially in times of COVID, because times is hard. Folks ain't got jobs. And, and it's just, it's hard out here. So I deeply, deeply appreciate that because, you know, you're looking at the person who does a lot of the work for I Need Diverse Games. We got a board, we got people on the back end, but normally we'd all be at conventions now, we'd be at PAX, but it is what it is. So thank you again for all your support and for uh, you know enabling me to go out and do something for the community. And I wanna give a big thank you to all of you, my panelists who did so much and put out so much emotional effort. And you did it all from the kindness of your own hearts. Just because this round table is over, it doesn't mean our lives are done. Just because this round table is over, it doesn't mean black lives don't continue to matter. Just because this round table is over, it doesn't mean stop supporting black creators, black artists, black singers, black people. Just because this round table is over, it doesn't mean stop. Just like we saw from two months ago, when it was a literal roller coaster. And the worst part is when it fell, it wasn't a smooth sail. It was a drop. We're still here. We still have to exist. So thank you to Tanya, to Christina, to Gabe, to Brandon, to Michael, to Honey. I'm gonna give shout out to Critical Role, to D&D, to D&D Beyond, to Twitch for boosting this and giving more visibility. To LFM, hell yeah. LFM. <laughs> so, so many people. There are so many people who hosted this. 
Thank you all. But guess what? The fight ain't over. And I'm going to leave you with this one last thing. Stop using Ave. Stop using AAV. We ain't talk about it much, but I was just seeing it all day in chat. Like, yes, yeah, sis. Yes, honey. Stop. Stop doing it. Just stop. Okay, that's how I'm in. We're going to go raid X Mira Mira. Amazing black creator uh, who was fucking awesome. Um, because I believe in not just sharing the wealth, but continuing this. Just because we're done doesn't mean another black streamer isn't. So we're going to mm -hmm. raid them. Uh, Let's go. Mira Mira. Let's right do it. Now. Um, as always, keep making trip. I'm not going to do my raid call because it's not that serious. Uh, well, no, fuck that. Yes, we are. Um, um, I like to end my streams simply on this. I'm a bard. There's treble. Keep making treble. What that means is keep making treble wherever you go. We are the ones who are literally shaking up this system. We are the ones who are dismantling things with our words and building up whole civilizations with our song, with our love, with our support. So make trouble wherever you go. Don't let nobody stop you. Period. I love you. We'll see you on the flip side. Please. Knock a few buck. <laughs> Play that going out just 30 seconds. Just 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs>